hello everyone welcome back to my channel here i am with a new video on sonogashira coupling or sonogashira cross coupling reactions um, here i'm gonna show in this video what is the sonogashira coupling and what is the mechanism how you can apply this sonogashira coupling for your uh, research material or like how to make the uh, triple bonded or alkyne type symmetric compound or like unsymmetric compound by palladium catalyst uh, catalyzed reaction and also i'm going to show the reaction design by retrosynthetic step and also i will show one of my reaction i have done before which is published in enguante cam um, how to apply this shonogashira coupling for that reactions and what are the things you need to keep in mind and also since i said in my previous video another day i'll uh, explain about like reading the supporting information how to read the supporting info and how it works and how to question yourself like why i am using those things uh, in the recipe or like uh, experimental procedure and after that some uh, common an important feature of this Shonogashira coupling reaction and some limitations. Let's see what is Shonogashira coupling reaction first. So the Japanese scientist Kenikichi Sonogashira, who was a professor of chemistry at Osaka University in Japan, um, he discovered this Shonogashira coupling reaction and after that it is widely used in many cases in um, organic research lab uh, for uh, making the alkyne type compound. So in 1975, Kei Shonogashira and co-workers reported that symmetrically substituted alkynes could be prepared under mild conditions by reacting acetylene gas with aryl iodides or vinyl bromides in the presence of catalytic amounts of uh, palladium catalyst and cuprous iodide. This reaction works better in presence of ligand, triphenyl phosphine ligand. So here the R1X, R1 could be aryl alkenyl or heteroaryl and X could be chloro, bromo, iodo or triflat. And here the alkyne compound where R2 could be hydrogen, alkyl, aryl and alkenyl or trimethyl silyl or trialkyl silyl group. What are the conditions? So palladium 0 or palladium 2 catalyst can be used as a pre-catalyst and with the presence of ligand it can convert to palladium 0 <coughs> and copper salt um, and base and solvent. So palladium catalyst commonly used this catalyst like bis chloro, bis triphenyl phosphine palladium catalyst or uh, sometimes tetrakis triphenyl phosphine palladium catalyst can be used. So copper salt, copper one salt can be copper one, uh, copper iodide or copper bromide, and base are commonly used tri, uh, diethylamine, triethylamine, uh, and uh, <coughs> dialkylamine. So CHX is like meaning alkyl, especially if you put three for the X like dimethylamine, and diisopropyl ethylamine and solvent in maximum case the this base uh, these are liquid and that can be used directly for the solvent purpose also but in some cases if your starting materials are not soluble so in that case you have to use methyl cyanide or thf or like tetrahydrofuran or uh, ethyl acetate and your product could be like symmetric if your r1 and r2 are same then it could be symmetric uh, or if they are different then it could be unsymmetric but you can connect it your alkyl halide or aryl halide directly with this carbon uh, with this carbon having the proton so proton will be kicked out with this so um, in this case remember one thing your alkyne should be terminal alkyne that means it should have at least one proton at the end to do the coupling so in the same time um, the research group of Haig and uh, El Kesar independently disclosed similar palladium catalyzed processes, but these were not using copper co catalysis, uh, and the reaction conditions were harsh. So the Shonogashira coupling became so widely popular because it can be done at room temperature or slightly above room temperature, unless uh, until uh, unless otherwise said. So the 
copper palladium catalyzed coupling of terminal alkynes remember the terminal alkynes that means this hydro uh, there should be a hydrogen with alkyne group with aryl and vinyl halide to give enines is known as the shonogashira cross coupling let's see the mechanism here the palladium zero or palladium two complexes can be used as a pre-catalyst and in presence of uh, ligand triphenyl phosphine the palladium catalyst become ligand palladium zero as a catalyst like uh, a real catalyst for the reactions and first step is oxidative addition here i am showing as an example as a aryl halide which will be inserted uh, in between this palladium or like you can say palladium will be inserted in between aryl and halide group and since the palladium was zero st oxidation state and now it converted to palladium two oxidation state so it is losing two electrons so that's why process is oxidation and that's why this step is called oxidative addition so this is pretty much same as the Hake reaction or suzuki reaction or buchwald uh hartwig reaction which i previously made uh, on those um, uh, reactions and i have those uh, video in my channel you can revisit those videos if you want to know about those so same as the uh, those reactions like first step is oxidative addition so while this adduct is formed it, so your copper halide and your terminal alkyne in presence of amine base react together to give uh, the amine base hydrogen halide salt from uh, this halogen is going here and this hydrogen is taken by this amine from this uh, amine base hydrogen halide salt while this copper is forming this al al alkyne cu cuprate or like this uh, intermediate organo copper compound remember this uh, this organo co copper compound is now taking part to uh, do the reaction with this palladium adduct here this halogen will be taken out by this copper and originally it will come back to this copper halide and this part will be attached with the palladium in, in the place of hal halogen since one metal is changing the the this organic part is changing work from one metal to another metal that's why this step is called transmetallation so through transmetallation you have aryl and this alka alkyne group in the palladium so now it will uh, this catalyst will go back to its original position from palladium two oxidation state to palladium zero that means it will accept two electron processes reduction so that's why by reductive elimination this aryl group will be connected with this part and that will be your final product so here by reductive elimination you are getting aryl and alkyl or like aryl this r can be aryl or hetero uh, aryl or anything so ultimately you will get a uh, carbon carbon triple bonded compound here so this is a real product for this uh, reaction or oh, remember the two i missed the two here so it will you can put two it it doesn't matter so this is the basic reaction mechanism of this ronogashira coupling while the copper iodide additive or catalyst act another reaction here to connect this your terminal alkyne to this palladium catalyst so now let's see how you can use this reaction as like what is the application so here i'm going to show one uh, reaction where i made this compound before and i have some ex uh, experience on that uh, it is it was published in ngu chem in 2020 um, uh, so you suppose i want to make this compound it is a symmetric alkyne compound so how i am going to make it so you can think retrosynthetic application or retrosynthetic analysis what is retrosynthetic like backward synthesis that is called retrosynthesis so how i can break it so i can break this compound as a terminal alkyne hydrogen here and the bromo compound same part bromo compound here <clears throat> now this terminal alkyne but how i can make it i I can make it from here this same compound how so let's see I need to make this first like protected version silyl group in the alkyne part and these will be coming from this bromo compound how so uh, here so bromo to uh, alkyne silyl trimethyl silyl group the this first step will be one shonogashira coupling and after this the deprotect this silyl group as a hydrogen so this hydrogen and bromo it will be another shonogashira coupling to go to go to this final compound so let's see what could be the conditions so here 
um, I used palladium bis dichloro di triphenyl phosphine and triphenyl phosphine as a ligand and copper iodide and triethylamine and THF and this is trimethyl silyl acetylene so one hydrogen is protected from the acetylene part so this is the shonagashira first shonagashira cross coupling to make this silyl protected uh, alkyne compound and what uh, after that you can use tbf as a, as a fluoride source to re kick out this silyl group from this and then you can make this a uh, deprotected alkyne compound this reaction can be done to uh, like different way you can also use other fluoride source like i also did another way that is potassium fluoride acetone are room temperature two hours the silyl group will be deprotected from here and once it is done then you can use the same starting material as a bromo compound and do second shonogashira uh, cross coupling reaction using the same catalyst and ligand copper iodide and triethylamine and thf the solvent so you will get the final compound like this let's see the conditions so in this first shonogashira coupling condition i used i took this bromo compound as a like limiting reagent and i, and I use one equivalent what is 13 millimole and palladium catalyst as a 2 millimole percent phos phosphine ligand 2 millimole percent copper iodide 1 millimole percent and triethylamine 20 milliliter and thf 20 milliliter i use thf to uh, dissolve this compound actually otherwise you can directly can use triethylamine as a solvent and definitely trimethyl silyl acetylene i use 2.8 equivalent you might use you might ask why i'm using uh, more than two equivalent like excess you could th think like it require one equivalent so um, this is uh, this compound is very sensitive and like uh, it can degrade very quickly so this compound normally is stored in the refrigerator and also it is water sensitive and that's why this compound need to be used like freshly um, purchased from the commercial source as well as also if you have like a uh, couple of months uh, older then uh, make some molecular sieves uh, open dried they come open dried molecular sieves and keep uh, this compound with the molecular sieves and then use it so there are many cases like you might not get the exact amount you need and uh, the flash point of this compound also very less so if you do degas some some part of it you might lose and that's why it is better to use a little bit excess so that's why i used here and then i deprotected this compound and once i get this deprotected compound like terminal alkyne and this bromo compound then i did the second sonogashira cross coupling reaction conditions are bromo compound one equivalent 15 millimole and same as like the first sonogashira two millimole percent two millimole percent copper iodide one millimole percent triethylamine 50 milliliter and th of 80 milliliter if you want to see more further uh, like addition description so you can go to this paper this is my paper uh, where i published it in uh with professor hartley in 2022 sorry 20 and um let's discuss about the, the first sonogashira coupling reaction and you already i already have discussed this condition N let's see the how it is reported in the support uh, like experimental or supporting information of that paper so here the description so here um, a schlank vacuum tube was charged with methyl 3 bromo 5 hydroxy Ben benzoate 3 gram 13 millimole and the palladium ca uh, catalyst as uh, like 2 millimole percent triphenyl amine uh, triphenyl phosphine 2 mole percent and uh, copper iodide uh, 25 milligram like 1 mole percent and the system evacuated and backfilled with an ar argon three times so another stage f was added followed by another triethylamine and trimethyl silyl acetylene uh, all liquid are uh, once the all liquids are added then the reaction mixture was degassed by three freeze pump thaw cycles so what is this freeze pump thaw cycles i will bring another video on freeze pump thaw cycles but basically i can explain so once you take everything in the slang tube uh, i'm going to show a, a similar sample video what is slang tube and how to use the slang tube like <clears throat> so in that slang tube you will add all the solids and you will use all the liquids required liquids for your reactions and then close this cap like tightly and after that um, uh, uh, attached 
uh, the line with a vacuum pump and then the put whole slang tube in a uh, in a container having liquid nitrogen cool it down liquid nitrogen has minus 196 degrees celsius so it it will cool down everything to the solid except the gases like oxygen so this reaction require completely deoxygenation deoxygenated condition so uh, whatever the reaction conditions like liquid trimethylsilylacetylene triethylamine thf everything will be solidified in this condition so once it is like solidified then just uh, open uh, or open the uh, slang tube cap a little bit um, to use the vacuum pump to uh, degas once degas is done then close this cap again while the whole flask in the liquid nitrogen and then close this cap uh, again while it is in, still in the liquid nitrogen after degassing and then once it is closed completely then take the flask out um, uh, from the liquid nitrogen container and put it in water so that process will be called thaw so this way once it is thawed to like room temperature it will be like liquefy everything and it, this process is late uh, you need to be really careful because once it is freezed make sure that you use the vacuum pump open a little bit the cap and degas it completely and then thaw it at room temperature like bring it to room temperature and once it is room temperature while the cap is closed remember when you are taking out your flask from the <clears throat> liquid nitrogen definitely your cap should be closed completely so that it cannot lose anything with the line so once it is thawed then you can use the same thing like you can cool it down to the liquid nitrogen again cooled uh, once everything becomes solidified then you open the cap a little bit again uh, with the vacuum line and degas it and do this cycle three times okay once it is done then sealed and heated at 85 degrees to 90 degrees celsius overnight the reaction mixture was cooled to room temperature and filtered through a short silite pad and washed with the ethyl acetate now you can ask like why i i, I need to use a short slide pad why i need to filter this part so remember when you do any palladium catalyzed reaction palladium always convert to palladium zero as a palladium black and that is very tough to like um, sometimes it is tough to uh, purify through the column or something and making some uh, more um, amount in the crude amount so uh, like also you might have some other uh, inorganic salt like copper iodide or like uh, something else which is not like organic solvent soluble so if you pass through the silite pads so all those inorganic insoluble salt will be stuck in the pellet uh, uh, silite and the, your compound will be dissolved in the ethyl acetate or like organic solvent it will pass through the silite and that organic solution will have your compound so once you did uh, rem uh, take out this washed compound with the ethyl acetate then remove that um, uh, ethyl acetate sol solvent from your compound under a reduced pressure like rotobab and then crude was dissolved in diethyl ether for times 50 milliliter now why so <clears throat> once you get this uh, crude solid in your hand then add this uh, add diethyl ether and then filter it and do it again like add more 50 milliliter diethyl ether and filter it and more 50 milliliter and wa wash and filter uh, all solids in the filter paper also with the diethyl ether in that case your compound has hydroxyl group and you have the also ester group and this compound is kind of soluble ether diethyl ether so your compound will be solubilized and it will pass through the filter paper but the, it will have uh, like solid material which is try which is the side product from this reaction because you are using triethylamine and also your bromine will be taken and also hydrogen will be taken from this terminal alkyne so it will give you a side product uh, triethylamine hbr salt which is very insoluble in the uh, diethyl ether so that's why we are just dissolving our component diethyl ether filter out uh, filter off those uh, salt inorganic salt produced in the reactions and once it is done then the solution was filtered and then concentrated to a quarter of its volume like one fourth of its volume then add little bit of dilute uh, uh, acl aqua solution and uh, wash it like just shake it and after that add some water in it and uh, like just washing with those two things and uh, after that just collect the organic solvent like ether extract 
uh, and then dry with the magnesium sulfate and the solvent removed under reduced pressure to get the crude product and that crude product can be washed with the uh, petroleum ether to afford your compound you don't need to do the column because there are two reasons one is this hydroxyl group ester it is like highly polar compound so that's why if you use pet ether so it will be solidified in the pet ether so you can get your compound immediately and also if you have the tri uh, like alkyne group and also this hydroxyl group is a phenolic hydroxyl group so it is kind of sensitive for the silica gel because silica gel is little acidic and also this tri uh, like alkyne alkene this kind of compound shouldn't use like um, silica gel column like if you don't have any other options because many times they normally um, uh, degrade or like polymerize in the silica gel because of the silica gel acidity so this is a very common um, uh, way of writing the procedure and you can when you are reading those things always whoever are the new in the research lab always ask every line yourself like why we are doing that why we are adding that w what is the reason behind that what is the reason behind that why we are doing this so this is uh, i hope this will help you to understand the reaction procedure and to do the reaction here and uh, now i'm going to show a sample video how to use the slang tube like what is slang tube look like and if you don't see my previous videos just to revisit my those videos in my channel on like palladium catalyzed slang tube reaction and also some other like uh, buchwald reaction and a hake reaction or suzuki coupling reaction you can see somewhere the slang tube here also i'm going to show a little bit of the sample similar setup but not exactly this strong because Shonogashira required like freeze pump thaw cycles even you can do without freeze pump thaw cycles uh, in that case just degas everything else before using the trimethyl silyl acetylene and once it is degassed properly then you can add trimethyl silyl acetylene at the end um then you can close your cap and then you can um, do the reaction or you can run the reaction in many cases people you can also use without slang tube just do the normal regular reaction flask add all of the solids uh, use a three net flask a flask that will be helpful for you so um before uh, before uh, adding everything just attach your condenser and c connect your condenser uh, part to the well bubbler and two other neck would be with the rubber septa and uh, uh, with one uh, neck uh, connected with the argon gas or nitrogen uh, nitrogen gas just uh, use the other neck to add all the solids once all the uh, all the solids are added then close the cap or rubber septa that in a three neck flask and then degas it um uh, before using the trimethyl silyl acetylene uh while you add you can add also the all liquid there like uh the tri uh, trithalamine and also thf uh, then you can also degas it and once all, everything is degassed under um, then uh, put some gases there and then finally before starting heating or like before starting reaction you can just add throw the rubber septa with the syringe the trimethyl silyl acetylene but make sure the trimethyl silyl acetylene should be dry and hydras and also it should be like freshly purchased or like not too older remember not too older and this thing always need to be stored in the refrigerator um, because this compound can be degraded let's see um, a sample video here i'm showing uh, how to add your uh, solid material with the weighing paper here i'm also put one youtube link which is one of my video by using this slang tube reaction so i'm using from there a little bit of this video from there so uh, you can you can see like i'm using a weighing paper as a like kind of a uh, pipe type funnel while i can use all the solids here once uh solid one solid is added then uh you can add your catalyst your ligand your uh, uh, like inorganic or like copper iodide or like copper bromide whatever the required so you can add all those together and uh, insert in the slang tube so here um this uh, this first part is easy like addition but uh, then you have to use the cap uh, so it has a special design that it has a side arm to connect with the vacuum line here you can see this uh, uh, side arm 
and here this part is uh, has a screw type cap so you can go all the way down to close it so um, here I'm closing this cap and I'm gonna um, do first initial degas or even if you don't need to do the initial degas but if you add everything else then if you do this freeze pump thaw cycle then you can add everything together then cool it down to the liquid nitrogen with the liquid nitrogen uh, to solidify it and then degas it now here i'm using the like anhydrous solvent from the commercial bottle and once my solvent is uh, solvent addition is done then i will just degas it so here uh, my addition part once the addition part is done then i will uh, put the cap back so um now i'm gonna do the degassing so with this side arm uh, i'm gonna do the degassing with the vacuum pump uh, regular vacuum pump so here i'm not showing the freeze uh, pump thaw process of like i'm not freezing down and then i'm not using the pump so directly i'm using the pump because in that case i'm not using any uh, compound which can be gone with the vacuum line so as i mentioned before like this will be the similar kind of setup but yeah i'm doing like quick vacuum here so once the vacuum part is done then i'll just set up the uh, i will put back like i'll close this cap tightly once it is done then i'll set i'll set up this reaction in a well bath to start heating for overnight so once it is degassed then i always also put little bit gas uh, like nitrogen or uh, argon what is the inert gas you have available in the re uh, in your lab so once it is done so then just close the cap tightly and take out this and set up the reaction So here I already put my reaction vessel in oil bath and uh, temperature probe and I uh, start the I'm starting the heating here and the stirring. So once it is done, I am also before starting heating and the stirring, I put a reaction shield in front of this reaction flask because it is a closed cap reaction system. So it we never know like it may explode or something if we do any mistake. So here um the reaction setup is done so this is the way you can set up the reaction um this schlank tube reaction so this is how schlank tube reaction look like and how you can set up this reaction so once everything is done so make sure that there is no plastic container or solvent container nearby or like no plastic tubing here so leave the reactions overnight to be finished and then next day um like just you can uh, work up your reaction so i already explained how to work up the reaction just to uh, cool down that reaction schlank tube and then just make it room temperature and slowly open the cap once it is open then the pass the liquid part like whole part uh, through the silite pad and also add more ethyl acetate rinse out and everything wash out the silate sil uh, sil silite pad and collect all the organic part and then do the reaction workup so this is the uh, reaction looks like now uh, let's see some important features of these reactions so, uh, <clears throat> so the shiro reaction it can be done at at or slightly above room temperature so this is the major advantage of doing uh, making alkyne compound uh, other than the other reaction available reactions which could be which can be more harsher conditions and especially sometimes it might have some explosive compound like um, in many cases people use like copper acetylides that means di copper acetylene like di copper ethyne so that is copper acetylide and that handling of the di copper uh, sorry handling of the copper acetylide is very sensitive like sh it is sh shock sensitive and explosive in nature so uh, it can be avoided by the use of catalytic amounts of copper one salt in this reaction and 
copper one cell can be the commercially available like copper iodide or copper bromide they are very cheap and are usually applied in 0.5 to 5 mole percent with respect to the halide or alkyne so a thorough deoxygenation is essential to maintain the activity of the palladium catalyst so remember um, uh, this reaction condition always is essential to maintain uh, the degas processing like you have to remove all the oxygen otherwise your palladium catalyst catalyst will be will gone bad <clears throat> often the base serves as the solvent but occasionally a co-solvent is used like thf acetonitrile or ethyl acetate so in commonly the triethylamine is a common solvent for sonogashira reaction and that can be used as a solvent purpose too but in many cases if your starting material is not soluble in thf like tetrahydro sorry soluble in uh, is not soluble in triethylamine so in that case you can use thf like tetrahydrofuran methyl acetonitrile or methyl cyanide or uh, ethyl acetate so that will help to dissolve your starting material to do the reaction to take part the reaction and the coupling is history specific the history chemical information of the substrate is preserved in the products like if you start with any is a stereo specific compound as a starting material so at the end your compound final compound also will have that same kind of stereo um stereo specificity <coughs> The order of reactivity for the aryl and vinyl halide is <coughs> most fasted with the iodide or equivalent like equal to triflet. Iodo compound or triflet compound are almost having the same rate. Then bromo, then chloro. Less the rate will be very less for the chloro because it is hard to remove the chloro. <coughs> <coughs> Almost all functional groups are tolerated on the aromatic and vinyl halide substrates, but alkynes with conjugated electron withdrawing group, like if your R2 is CWO2ME, like ester group, that ester group not in like as a fu side functional group. I am saying if your ester group is directly connected to the alkyne carbon, in that case, it will give Michael addition product and proper, proper gelic substrates with and also with electron withdrawing groups r2 with the ch2 c double o2 me like the one methyl before the uh, ester group and that if that is directly connected to the alkyne carbon or amine group with the alkyne carbon it tend to rearrange to alanes under the reaction conditions so these are the very common features for these reactions now uh, there are some other things we can know the exceptional functional group tolerance of the process make it feasible to use this coupling for complex substrates in the late stage of a total synthesis what does it mean like this reaction has a functional group tolerance and this is really exceptional and in many cases many people do like natural synthesis like total synthesis <clears throat> or natural product synthesis or many step reactions so in that case if you can keep your bromo or iodo compound intact up to like uh, eight or ninety step or like more of the final step and if you need to do like a, at the final stage uh, the sonogashira you can keep it you can do it at the stage like last stages even having all other functional group in your compound and in terms of functional group tolerance the nigishi cross coupling is the best alternative to the sonogashira reaction so in some cases Son uh, sonogashira reaction if it doesn't work better so you can take nigishi cross coupling reaction um, the same preference or like same purposes so what are the limitations of these reactions so there are two limitations so aryl halides and bulky substrates that are not very reactive require higher reaction temperature and also at high temperature terminal alkynes undergo side reactions so that's a problem so in many cases if you need high temperature for this reaction so that could be a problem or side reaction could be produced like side product could be produced so in that case you will less you lose the yields of the reaction so these are the um, 
common things for this Sonogashira reaction and I try to explain the reaction mechanism and the application and reaction design and also the little bit about the supporting info and how slang tube looks like and how can you set up the reactions so I hope this video will help you to understand this uh, whole thing and thank you for supporting my channel and also who didn't subscribe my channel yet please subscribe my channel and stay tuned and click the bell button to get more update on many other chemical reactions uh, mechanism and like technique reaction technique uh, process